Hi guys, this is Josh, and this video is going to be a very quick overview of how I create these vector portraits using Google Drawings. So I'm just getting the image right now, just copy and pasting it right into uh, Google Drawings on a canvas size of 10 inches by 10 inches. And uh, if you double click on an image in Google Drawings, it'll bring up a crop tool. So I just try to square it off a little bit. Then I start by selecting sort of these bit, the big chunky shapes, kind of establishing my silhouettes. And so I usually start with the skin tone because it's underneath clothing, uh, using a, a sort of dark to medium um, range of, of, of color. And then um, to start creating the forms on these shapes, I go back in and start selecting, basically by tracing over the photo, the, the sort of next biggest shapes that that will identify this as a as a portrait as a person and in this case you know it's I'm just using black right now kind of get the you know these big uh, big chunky areas of, of shadow and uh, uh, and darker darker tones and I'm just using the polyline tool so there's no curves in this at all there is a curve line tool and it only creates curves so you don't get like your you know your pen tool like you're used to in photoshop or illustrator that you can create these bezier curves and, uh, and straight lines and, and curved lines it's either one or the other and so i use the polyline tool which has actually been part of what has contributed to this style of developing um i really like this sort of comic book uh, um, you know, uh, chunky, slightly, slightly rigid, um, illustrated look. So again, now I'm just creating shapes that follow the the higher the higher uh, parts of the forms of this of, of this face. This, by the way, is is Chris Gators and very talented photographer. So the cheekbones, the um, the brow ridge, the eyelids, you see actually in the photo there's some blue light, light that's being reflected off of his eyes um, and, and his hair, which is really nice for the photo, but I didn't want to do that with this more simpli simplistic uh, illustration to, and make it look like he was I yeah, had makeup on or something, so uh, keep it really simple, real simple color palette, uh, very simple shapes. Uh, that's partly what what enables me to be to, to move very quickly. Is that, you know I have very few tools to work with. Very, you know, there's there's no filters, there's no um, effects. These are just big blocks of chunky shapes <laughs> and. Um, you, you do have opacity over colors. It's not over objects or layers, but you actually choose the the, the opacity of the color itself, and um, and you can do that with uh, you know web RGB hexadecimal code. You know you normally have six six digits in a RGB color digits or or number letters, uh, and then you have two more after that that will determine in the in the CSS, how opaque that color is. So you see, I just continue. Here's a here's a semi-transparent color that I've chosen to kind of be um, kind of the, the highest point of the forms that uh, that catch the light. And I just slide everything over into place onto onto my artwork. That I, I just create it just sort of right next to the photo itself and then continue going and I try to sort of make as, as few shapes as, as needed so if there's a big area like this where it's all gonna be pretty much the same color you know I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that and then go in with little bits and little, little highlights little details slide them over get them just in place and if you double click on these shapes, you get you get nodes that you can edit, just like in Illustrator. 
um, except there's no handles, you know, as far as like, you can't bend them, you can't, you know, uh, have curved lines. You just move the nodes around. I slide everything over until it looks, looks good. You, you see me constantly zooming out just to check both both my drawing against the photo and just to see, you know, um, how, how light or dark my colors should be. Uh, I try to be very careful when I'm selecting colors. As you see here, um, this is actually kind of a gray color. I uh, hardly will ever use white in a drawing. These eyes look nice and bright compared to everything else around them. So you got to select your colors uh, in context with everything else that's going on. And uh, these portraits really are all about the eyes, so I spend a lot more time on the eyes and and usually the mouth, because those are the, the, the kind of key features of the face that really communicate um, emotion and uh, mood. And they, they kind of follow each other. If you've ever noticed, when you're surprised, your mouth opens and your eyes widen, or eyebrows go up. So they, they kind of follow each other. And uh, so I'll go ahead and spend a lot more time on these eyes. You know, if, if everything else is sort of, you know, low detailed, but the eyes eyes really pop and the eyes look, you know, realistic and nice and all the, all the sort of key elements are there, uh, viewers seem to be a lot more forgiving about the whole piece, even if it's very, very simplistic. So you see here, this is the only place that I use any lips and that's in the eyes. Uh, now I'm doing the, uh, the mouth here. Sliding it over, getting it right in place. This, this uh, whole portrait, by the way, took me about 45 minutes. And it's sped up to uh, about three times the speed that we're watching it now. About three times the speed. And I first, you know, even sort of got turned on to the idea, like, you might be asking the question, why am I doing this in Google Drawings? You know, Illustrator can do this, or, you know, even, even, uh, even a free software like Inkscape has more features than this, and you're totally right. Um, I got, uh, a while back, you know, I, I had the full Adobe Creative Cloud and it just, it was like right after they moved to the subscription based, uh, billing for their product. And, uh, I was really excited, had a great month, with, you know, had a lot of, a lot of work that month, great client, you know, clients were paying on time. And, uh, so, you know, went ahead and did it and was loving it. You know, had all, all the apps available to me in the, the Adobe, you know, Creative Suite. And if you've been in this, uh, you know, business long, you you know what usually follows a really high month, uh, not so high month. And it just got me thinking, like, it, could I be a professional designer without Adobe? Or, or anybody's product for that matter. Like, I just sort of started thinking sort of bare bones. Like, what do I actually need to to do what I love and, and to do work that will be uh, sort of comparable to kind of the industry standards out there? And um, do I need uh, these 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 other tools? Maybe, maybe the answer is yes, but maybe it's not all the time. And uh, so I still have I still have Photoshop. I still use that. But uh, having something that can truly work uh, cross platform across any any device. This runs in a web browser. I'm doing all of this in a web browser, uh, regardless of operating system, regardless of you know hardware that you have, or you know there's there's no there's no uh, subscription. There's nothing to buy. You can just as long as you have a Google uh, a Gmail account, log into your Gmail and uh, or Google Drive, and these apps are available. So 
I'll just continue making these these shapes and finish out this this portrait, this headshot here. The, the shoulders here, this sweater. A lot of times I will interpret where my lines should go. You know, whether there's like depth of field in the photo, so you don't really know exactly where that line uh, of the silhouette should end or or begin. So a lot of it's still a very a very uh, interpretive, creative process. Um, you see here, you know, I just I made everything black, and then I go I go in and just I'm sort of like drawing the the reflected light that sort of gives these these things both its form and its color. And I think about this, it really helps me. I have to constantly think I'm not drawing lines. I'm not drawing lines because that's sort of my natural tendency to, when I pick up a pencil, uh, or if I'm in a you know a digital program to to look at the lines and try to do some really great line work first. And then go in and color it and in this case the color is the lines is the shape it's all sort of the same so I have to think more like okay this is more like clay or uh, if you've ever used a 3d program these are like low poly uh, 3d models and I have to sort of extrude and push uh, a shape out of this and, and so to me, vector, vector graphics really work well for that because it is sort of like molding rather than painting or drawing. And, uh, and I, really, I really have come to, to like that a lot and, and actually have gotten a lot quicker at, at, at creating something that's recognizable as a portrait, or a face of a person with, with shapes and, you know, planes, like 3D planes. You know, you're drawing the, the light that bounces off of a form rather than line drawing and then color it. And um, that's allowed me to, to, to just work quicker. I have to con consciously think about it pretty much through the whole piece that I, you know I'm not drawing lines. I'm, um, I'm drawing light, really light form shapes. And uh, that's something that's really helped me. As you see here, I can uh, I can be creative, you know, and, and kind of exaggerate maybe some of the folds or highlights, uh, or just make up what's not there. Maybe there's not very much information at all there, or I can simplify information that is there. And in the in the case of the sweater, you know, there's actually texture in the sweater, but in vector. I'm not going to try to I'm not going to try to uh, you know draw the texture on here. I'm just going to get the shapes get the, the light that reflects off of those surfaces and uh, go from there. I did want to draw the little detail of the, uh, the emblem on, on, this, on the shirt. And, uh, it's, 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 it's a bit tricky, so I zoom in more than I, I normally would for, for other things except for maybe the eyes. Because um, I only have straight lines and I wanted to make this all one piece. So you see how I kind of connect these these shapes, almost like a connect the dot. And then I just slide it over, get it in place. And I'm working, working with the color of this uh, sweater because I, I want it to look um, nice as an outfit, but also uh, work as a like what what sort of natural light would be f reflecting off of this color and uh, and uh, and also create contrast in, in, in the design so I was happy with that went ahead and just got rid of the, the photos and resized it to my canvas and here's the finished piece thank you guys for watching uh, I have more to come this is Josh from Palmer Creative